Hi Knitters, um, happy Christmas Eve. Uh, I don't know when you're going to watch this because I assume most of you are gonna be spending time with family and quite busy, but when I'm filming, it is Christmas Eve, it's the morning. I am going to the airport later tonight. I'm taking a red eye out to New York and going to spend Christmas in the city. Um, I'm very excited to go, as you guys know. I'll talk about this later, but it's the one year passing one year anniversary of my mother's um, sudden passing. So I just thought it might be nice to get out of my own head and out of my apartment that I see every day, just do something a little bit nice. Um, but anyway, I'm so glad to see you guys. Uh, I used to, I still kind of do. I love Christmas, I really do. Um, I love the lights, I love the decorations. I just think um, it's a good time to celebrate what we have. And I'm so glad that if you guys are taking out some time in your holiday season to spend it with me, I'm very honored. Um, I, today's episode will, I'm not sure how long it's going to be, I never know how long it's going to be, but today's episode is about uh, sharing the gifts that my friends gave me and um, gifts that I got myself. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. Um, I'm planning quite a few episodes in the next week. So there's this one, which I know is unexpected. Um, it's just a little holiday treat. Um, then I'm going to do probably like a New York vlog type thing um, because I'm hoping that I get to see some knitters um, that I'm excited to see in person. And then I will be doing a end of year wrap up before the new year begins um, to show you guys my hopefully 30 uh, knits of 2021. But anyway, sweaters, specifically sweaters. It's 30 sweaters plus a beret. And you guys have seen the beret, but I'm gonna show it again anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's the plan. It's gonna be quite a busy week in terms of recording. So I hope that everything goes to plan. Um, really quickly, let's talk about finished objects. Uh, you guys can see I am wearing the Amara and I love it. I have taken many finished object photos, but I'm taking it to New York anyway, because I love it so much. It deserves even more <laughs> photos. I really, this was a labor of love, you guys. It really was. You guys know the process of this was a lot, but I think it deserves every photo I take, um, if not more. So yes, it's going with me to New York and um, I'm very excited. And I did plan my makeup look around this sweater. So yes. Um, yeah, what else did I fail to mention? Oh, as always, you guys know me now, I hope. Our own Knits and Pearls, it's on the, it's below the screen, I know that. Um, yeah, Our Knits and Pearls, you can find my Ravelry Instagram Ko-Fi and Patreon <laughs> linked below, as well as uh, any dyers, makers, designers that I need to mention below as well. And I'll also be including the creator of these earrings. Um, I'm pretty sure she sold out of the holiday uh, series, but you know, just in case. I like her work, so. Yeah, sorry, it was a lot of information at the beginning. My brain is a little bit hectic. Um, okay, to stay organized, let's talk about presents that my friends got me. So last episode, I shared uh, presents that I got from my friends and they loved them. At least that's what they told me. So I'm gonna go off of that, I'm gonna trust them. And um, they gifted me some stuff. And really quickly, <sighs> Giving gifts is one of my love languages. I love doing that for other people. Um, my mom used to say it was a talent that I would listen to what they were saying throughout the year and be able to pick something out that I knew that they would like because of what something they mentioned months ago. Um, and my mother said that was a talent because she was not talented at it. Um, she, bless her heart, she was so talented at so many other things but not gift giving. And so from a young age, she kind of gave, gave up buying me gifts. Um, so she'd give me like $50 and say, go buy yourself something nice. Um, and uh, as I grew up, like it just got worse. So she really just stopped trying at all. Um, so I got really accustomed to buying myself gifts. And this was the same with my uh, ex as well. Not, not gonna give a gift. So I, um, I gave myself a lot of gifts and I would be like, yep, you got me this, don't worry about it. Um, uh, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so I kind of grew into that habit and I wanted to talk about this really quickly. You guys will notice my Shiba Inu is missing. Um, some people ask what it is, what type of dog it is. It's a Shiba Inu, it's a Japanese dog and uh, it's a Japanese ceramicist that um, I will link again, I'll link everybody, but I'm pretty sure right now because of COVID restrictions, he can't ship outside uh, of East Asia, I'm pretty sure, but I'll link him anyway. Um, I actually, this was a custom yarn bowl design 
he did for me. Um, this was when I graduated college. I really wanted a yarn bowl, but I wanted something really cute and really me. And this is what I asked him to make. He made two designs. This was my favorite, so I got this one. And it's a little Shiba Inu, and I love it. And I know you guys have been paying attention to it as well, um, so I wanted to talk about it. But it does relate because, like I said, I have given myself gifts for like every occasion in my life because nobody else buys me gifts. Um, and in that respect, I also treated myself for this holiday season because no one was gonna buy me gifts. That's what I thought until my friends showed up. But anyway, so I bought these gifts for myself like months ago, months ago, um, probably four or five months at least. Um, the first one is this bag from Earl Grey Fiber Company. Earl Grey Fiber Company, she makes bags as well as dyes yarn. This is her branded tissue paper, which I love. Um, I didn't throw it away because I wanted to show you guys. See her logo right there. Um, yeah, so I got this Christmas yarn. It is green tinted, it's speckly and green. And the colorway is Winter Walk on her Darjeeling sock, which is just a 7525 Merino nylon. Um, and I really like this base, you guys know, 7525 is my jam. Um, but I thought it went so cute together and it's Christmassy. So yeah, present to myself. Um, I got three skeins so I can do a sweater, obviously. You know, you guys know me by now. But yeah, um, and it's a cork bottom, so it's pretty, I, I won't worry about it getting wet, basically. But I really love the design of it. Um, so that was one gift I got for myself. And again, that's from Oprah Fabric Company. Another gift I got myself was uh, this fluffy cow. Um, I use, I still do. I love stuffed animals. I, <laughs> I try not to buy any because if I let myself get one, I'll keep getting more. But this one I saw on Instagram and it's this little pink fluffy cow. And it's um, made by this crochet artist in the UK. And again, I'll link her. Um, but it's so cute, like, <laughs> with just little horns. Uh, yeah, so it was just a present for myself, and, um, it's just adorable. I couldn't not get it. Yeah, so, um, then the last one is another pink one. This is a bag from Hohi & Co, and it's pink leather, and you guys know I love pink, obviously. I'm gonna be taking this to New York, so you'll see it in action. Um, you know, in my photos, the red leather is a little bit wrinkled because of the trip from Argentina, but you know, I'll live with it. Um, yeah, you can see her logo, Hohi and Co. But yeah, I it's super soft and it's just, the inside is suede, so I won't be like throwing food or drinks in here, obviously. But it's very good quality leather, like, I can feel it's very good quality. I love the slightly contrasting stitches from the thread. And I'm very excited to wear this in my photos and wear it around town. Um, I love big bags. I'm a small person, but I love big bags because I just don't want to throw everything I want inside. Um, and it definitely helps when I carry around so much like yarn. You guys know I carry around whips like all the time, like all the time. Um, but yeah, so those are the three presents that I got for myself. And that was really just to demonstrate that I am used to buying presents for myself. Um, but then my friends came in and uh, really blew my expectations out of the water because I don't expect presents ever. And if I do get gifts, I'm just, I'm appreciative that people thought of me. Um, I've never been like, oh, you didn't give me a good gift. But like, I didn't, I don't expect gifts anymore um, since I was a kid. Um, but then Shanna and Megan really like stepped it up. So first one is a boba tea candle. You guys know I love boba. If you watch my Instagram on my, <laughs> On my stories, I'm getting boba probably once a week. I've lessened it since it's gotten cold because I don't really want an ice drink when it is snowing out. Um, but it is boba tea scented and the lid has little boba tea decoration. It's super cute. Um, so Shannon got that since when we meet for boba every week when it's warm. And she also got me this so stunning um, planter from a ceramicist that I've long admired. And actually she didn't know I admired him. She just likes his work separately too. And it was just like, oh my God, you got me this? Like I was freaking out. Um, it was quite a scene at the restaurant because I'm sure I squealed like a little child because I'm so excited. I do love house plants. Um, I have the plant picked out already. It's um, in my bedroom, but I didn't want to replant it because 
house plants don't like to be moved, um, jostled very much during the winter season because they're kind of dormant and I didn't want to stress it out any more than it needs to be when it's cold. So I'm keeping this planter separate for right now, but it does have a baby destined for it. And I'm so excited. Um, this planter is gorgeous. You can see the little crystal details at the bottom. And it's obviously pastel iridescent, which is so me. And then my friend Megan of Kimchi & Co, she got me, well, once she got me a box of chocolates, but I ate those immediately. So there's just no showing me the box of chocolates. Um, but she did knit me these socks. And actually this sock set is from uh, Earl Grey Fabric Company as well. Um, all three of us, Shannon, Megan, and I, we had enough yarn for three pairs. So Megan knit herself a pair of matching ones. Shanna knit herself a pair of matching ones. And uh, Megan gifted me one pair, obviously, because I don't knit socks. Um, but yeah, I think it's super cute that we're all going to be matching. And we'll probably take photos uh, when we go to Portland together in February. But I'm so excited. And you guys can see here this delicate, like, peachy nude color with speckles and the bright mint. I just, I love it. Um, I'm super excited. And of course, it's a perfect fit because Megan and I actually have very similarly sized tiny feet. So it works out well. Yeah, if I had large feet, I'd feel really bad if she knit me socks. I mean, I'm already grateful enough as it is, but if I had large feet, I think I'd feel awful asking her to knit me socks. Um, then she knit me, or she not, not she knit me, I'm not making sense. She got me a uh, sweater kit from La Viera May. So really quickly, let me show you the sweater. You guys will pro have probably seen it. It was in Lane issue 12. It's called the Rue de Paris. Um, it's a drop shoulder, it's really lovely, and I fell in love with this version specifically. Can I see here? That little lovely pink. And Megan, bless her heart, remember that I mentioned this months ago, because this came out in autumn, and so it was probably like September. But she mentioned that, I mentioned that I loved it so much, so she got me the sweater set um, from La Viera May. And this uses a few different bases. This uses helix and mohair, two different kinds of mohair held together for that beautiful, delicate pink look. And I'm so excited. Um, there's more skeins, obviously. It's not just one um, per color. There's two, but I can't hold six skeins in one hand or even two hands, it'll be awkward. So um, I just wanted to show you guys. I'm so excited. I really, I was so surprised um, to receive such thoughtful gifts and like gifts that I would, 10,000% love, you know, like I'm just, I'm not used to it. I'm not used to it. Um, yeah. So it was just, uh, it was a very strange moment because my entire childhood and adulthood, I've been like, I don't get gifts that I enjoy. I get them for myself and I appreciate the gesture from other people. So for me to have friends now who not only understand my weird obsession with yarn, but like can preemptively know what I love like that was just it was very special to me um yeah it was just it was a really great great day um yeah and I actually uh this was part of the gifts that I was going to give them but it came late so it came after we already met up for the gift exchange so I'm going to be um giving them later um this is a stitch marker set from Knit Boop and they're little daisies and I love daisies um so I'm going to give them each a set of this and I think it's so cute. And there's actually five stitches per set. So I think it's a pretty substantial amount for what it costs. And I actually, I ordered 10 of these guys from her. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. Yeah, thank you, Knit Boop. They're really beautiful and I can't wait to use them on mine. I am keeping a couple for myself, so yeah. But those will go to my friends. Um, yeah, so I talked about the gifts. Let's talk about whips. Yeah, let's do whips first before echoes. Yeah, that makes sense. No, it doesn't, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Um, this one is the New Year pattern coming out from Jen Stein Gas. See, see, I'm learning. I'm, I'm catching myself before I say it. Jen Stein Gas, her New Year's pattern. Actually, I thought about it. This is my third, not my second. Um, I've actually done three Jen Stein Gas patterns for New Year's. I'm almost done with the yoke. Eh, sorry, I'm just gonna do it in the in the circle shape. I'm almost done with the yoke. I have like 12, 13 rows left. Um, you can see here there's a slanting 
line of leaves and then a triangle and it, it'll go down the other way. So it's quite lovely. Um, for As a reminder, I'm using Explorer Knits um, main color linen and the contrast color is Hypothesis Yarns Persephone. Persephone. And I love the way it's working up together. Let me try and get it closer so you can see the variation in it. Obviously there's enough contrast that um, the color work doesn't get lost, which is super important to me. I know some people like low contrast, but I don't generally. I think if I'm gonna do all that effort to do color work, I really want it to pop. And I love the way those colors are working together. Um, yeah, and then my other whip, I shared it on my Instagram yesterday. I know some of you are worried that I'm branching out of my color comfort zone. Um, yeah, because you guys saw like the dark greens and this is obviously not a pastel either. So I know some of you were worried that I was forgetting my roots. You don't have to worry about that. One, I have plenty. Two, my new cast on is this guy. <laughs> it's absolutely just a marshmallow dream. So the main color is this white. Um, this is from Blue Sky Fibers. Um, this was brush surrey and the colorway whipped cream so it's just a white and the contrast color here it's subtle here but when i show you guys you're gonna be like hot dang i'm using three strands of mohair um this is the mohair it's wandering flock rainbow sherbet i think i shared it in an earlier episode like one of the early episodes rainbow sherbet and you can see here it's just absolutely gorgeous this is the colorway that reminded me of esmeralda from hunchback of notre dame remember um yes so i'm obsessed I'm obsessed. And this pattern is called Pavlova. And it only like, the only color that peeks through is from the bumps of a pearl rose. Um, it's not technically color work because you're only using one strand of yarn per row. It just involves some slips and knits and pearls. So it, it looks like color work. And the reverse you can see it looks so beautiful. I'm like obsessed with this. I cast on uh, the other night and I literally could not stop working on it. I fell asleep at 1.30 a.m. just because I lost track of time because I loved seeing all the little colors pop. I'm just, I love it so much. Yeah, so you guys don't have to worry about me losing my love of pastels, I promise. Yes. I'm just, this is probably one of those that I, I tell myself when I'm working on sweaters all the time, like, oh, this is my favorite sweater ever. This is gonna be my favorite sweater ever. But I think I might be right when I say, this is this might be my favorite sweater ever. Like, can you imagine when I finally get to wear this? Like, just how ridiculous it'll be. It's just a fluffy cloud. And because it's named Pavlova, it really fits because it looks just like, like the most pastel meringue kisses in knit into a sweater that you could possibly imagine. Um, I'm just so excited about this, you guys. I can't wait to show you guys as it continues to grow. <sighs> just... Also, it's a raglan, so you know it's easy to work on. I love it. I'm taking this with me to New York because um, it'll be easy to work on around other people. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> and of course, I'm storing it in a well-suited bag. Um, for those of you who don't remember, this is my Black Pearl uh, Magic. Laveau bag. She called it her Laveau bag and it comes with a rainbow zipper. Um, and it really is very fitting for how um, pastel and ridiculous this sweater is. I love it. Ah. Yeah. So I know I showed you the Laveau bag before, but I really wanted to show it with the other yarn in it because it really encapsulates the look, I feel like. Um, okay. And then the other finished object other than the Amara, since I last saw you guys, is my Vera pullover is done, yay! It's a little bit more cropped on the body than I normally do, um, but that's because I'm planning on wearing it with skirts. I have a finished object photo outfit planned, but I don't want to do it yet because I'm planning on doing it in New York with my friend. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be a short episode uh, in terms of the knitting content. I'll talk about personal stuff in a second. I just want to show you guys this as like a sneak preview of what the photo situation is gonna happen in New York, like. Okay, yeah, just wanted to talk about that for a second. 
Um, now is for the personal stuff. So if you guys are one of the viewers, and I take no offense either way. If you just are here for the knitting, I'm sorry it was so short. I promise. I'm, I have two other episodes planned for this week. So like, I promise there'll be more knitting stuff and you can come back for that. But um, for those of you who want to hear more of the personal stuff, uh, now's your time to shine, I guess is the way I want to say it. Um, Everything else is great. Like, um, I'm, I'm still seeing that redheaded person named Matt that I mentioned whose mother is a knitter. I'm still seeing him. Um, things are going great. Really happy with my life. Um, work is great. Everything's awesome. In now three days, it'll be the one year anniversary of my mom's death. And um, my mood has fluctuated a lot. Um, sometimes like right now, like it'll hit me all of a sudden, you know? Um, and then sometimes I'm great and I, I pretend that, like it feels like I didn't even have her um, for as long as I did. Um, and I don't like to talk, I, sorry, sorry. For those of you who don't know, I shared it um, not on my knitting Instagram, but on my personal. My mother committed suicide. Um, I don't think it, it, it wasn't a long prolonged, you know, suffering. She didn't struggle with depression in that way. Uh, what happened very, you know, too long didn't read. Very briefly, my father had an affair and she found out Christmas Day. And of course there were arguments about it after she found out. And on the 27th of December of 2020, they got into another fight and my father said he was leaving um, to go be with this other woman and my mother killed herself. Um, so when I talk about my dad, like I obviously have a very awkward, strained relationship with him. Like he's trying his best, he really is, um, he wasn't, a very active parent in my childhood, but he's really trying now. Um, but it's hard for me to not resent him uh, because in my low points, it's very easy to blame him. Um, but that's not fair and that's not right. Um, he made a mistake, but it's not like, anyway, I'm dealing with a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know I would get this emotional this quickly. I guess I've been not thinking about it for uh, the past few days, um, been trying not to think about it for the past few days. Because uh, I don't want to cry on a plane. I don't want to cry walking through Central Park alone. Like I, I just want to, like part of me wishes I could forget, um, but Part of me wants to still think about it, even though it hurts. Um, yeah. I just want to thank you guys for your support and patience. Because I, I know I say it a lot, but I don't think that anyone can understand. Like, just how much it needs. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, the last few minutes, um, are actually going to be a video of her singing. I, I thought about not sharing this about my mom because I've shared it on my Instagram. If you guys really wanted to find out, you could. And I thought, okay, like, there's no reason for me to share it. But, um, I think it's important for me not to hide it, if that makes sense. Um, but my mother, like, I don't want her to be remembered for how she left because um, she was she was so talented and amazing and um, she had the soul of an artist like she really did she was a beautiful singer and um, the video I want to end this video with is a uh, it's a video of her singing uh, at church every church in the area of their small little town would call her around Christmas and be like can you do a solo for us can you do a solo at the service and uh, my mother had the soul of an artist, so she would always oblige. She loved performing, loved performing, and she was amazing at it. So um, I thought it would be really good for me to share with you guys, because she would have loved it that people, so many people heard her sing. Um, 
So if you're still watching after I've started crying, like, <laughs> thank you. But, um, God, I feel like I cried way too much. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you would please stick around to watch her singing, it would mean a lot to me. Um, thank you guys so much again. And I promise next episode I will do more laughing than I'm doing crying. And thank you guys. Again, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Please stay safe and I will see you smiling next time. Bye. <laughs>